once I have decided on the niche that I want to target, then what I want to do is dive into that niche much, much deeper. I want to choose all the different products that I'm going to promote. It is okay if you find one at a later point in time that you want to throw into it, but overall you want to have a general idea of what you're going to promote beforehand so you know what to plan for, so you know what pages to build on your site, so you know what content you're going to need and how to arrange everything. So first thing you want to do is to pick all of those different products. Just like I was doing here on Amazon to begin with, for my initial research for um, product names and model numbers, I want to continue on with this same type of thing where I'm actually recording different brands and then I proceed on and get Google information for that as well. Make sure you're getting though, in addition to your brands and your um, the actual name of the product, get your model numbers and also get your Amazon ASIN as you go through. Now the number of products that you want to try to promote on a site can really vary from one situation to the next. It depends on where that uh, keyword traffic is available at. I have had some sites where I can simply put up one page of content having to do with a specific product and I can attract search traffic for say a specific product name like here Crucial BX100. There are plenty of examples where I've been able to attract the traffic with this way and then there are other cases where um, like for example with these solid state drives where I know that the competition on the product itself is going to be high and so I have to approach it in a different manner. When I can't go after the products directly or at least when I can't rely on that being the main source of traffic for my site for those product keyword phrases, then I tend to have less product pages on my site as a whole. So in this situation, I feel like I'm definitely going to need to go a little heavy on the content because I am targeting more informational phrases relating to the problems that this product helps to solve. And then I will have a few pages on my site that promote these specific products. However, based on the way these products actually work and the ways you have different models and different types of the product, I can certainly see the need for promoting a couple of different varieties within one brand name. So I'm a little more inclined to maybe even go after a brand based page where I have, for example, Samsung solid state drives, and then I promote the 850 Pro and the 850 Evo, and maybe even the older model, the 840, all on the same page. That way I can kind of compare those products for people and help them to decide which one is going to work out the best for them. It also gives me the opportunity to tap into a wide variety of keyword traffic for that one specific phrase. As an example, IKEA down comforters. You have a lot of different kinds of these in terms of the different uh, model names for it. But when it comes to one of those specific model names, like IKEA My Saran here, you can get really great search rankings for those pages without using that exact phrase in your title. 
And a perfect example is this page right here, one that I actually built myself. This is on downcomforterguide.com forward slash IKEA. The title of this page is IKEA Down Comforters. There's no mention of Mysa Ron in my title whatsoever. And yet I still have a number three search ranking on this product phrase. And there's actually a pretty decent amount of traffic on this keyword phrase. This is actually one of the top performers for that entire website. And in fact, I have even outranked IKEA itself for that exact phrase. So using this as an example, and even surefire proof for you that Google does respect pages that are made in this manner, I can have my Samsung solid state drive page and have it going after a couple of different types of that product and do it all within one page. So again, I can do the same thing with my solid state drives. And so I'll likely end up with um, just brand pages instead of specific product pages. Now, the reason why it's important to know all this ahead of time and also why you kind of need to think about how much content you need on your site is so you know how many products to pick. If I were to go through and select 10 different solid state drive products and ended up wanting to put them all on specific pages of my site, I would likely end up needing to build a 30 page website to really include enough informational content to cover it. Another part of why I would personally choose in this example to put everything under a brand page is because there's really not a huge difference between the different models. Things like um, these two examples. The only difference here between these two is really having to do with the capacity. The, um, the speeds can be slightly different between these two, but it's really more uh, in relation to the size. So ultimately when you're doing benchmarking, um, there's not a major difference. The, the smaller ones actually end up being slightly faster than the larger ones do because there's less information there. So there's really not a lot that I could talk about. If I were to make 10 different pages and each one of them covers a specific product. However, if I'm covering each brand on one page, I can point out why that brand is special for that kind of product and then talk about the differences all in one location and it'll help people to make their decision a little better. Now again, I'm not saying this is best for every possible niche out there, but for this particular one, I feel like this is going to be the best direction to take and also knowing what kinds of uh, informational content I'm going to need to be including on that site. Now, in addition to choosing more products to promote, you also want to explore more potential keywords that you can target. If you did not really do an in-depth exploration before you picked your niche, maybe when you had uh, three or four different niche choices and you kind of just wanted to do a couple of items for each niche to try to figure out which would be your best choice and then you wanted to expand and do all of your extra keyword research, now is when you will want to take care of that before you actually decide what the different pages of your site will be about. This, however, I don't feel like we'll need a lot of additional demonstration. It's the same thing that I've already done for you involving um, these extra product phrases and checking them out on Google in terms of the traffic and the competition, your model numbers, and also your informational phrases relating to things like problems that you might be able to solve or just simply general information that somebody might really need to know about a product.
before they can actually choose which one they want to buy. So again, record all of this information, record your product names, the Amazon ASINs, and all of this expanded keyword research. Now this is not something that I could really do over the course of one single class while sitting in front of you guys. Um, so it is something that I will, ha that I have had to uh, go into in advance and actually explore. You can see right here though, I've gone ahead and picked out products for this niche. The Samsung 850 Pro, the 850 Evo, the 840 Evo. I've got a couple of the Intel solid state drives, couple Crucials, couple SanDisk ones, and then a couple of accessories that are commonly needed to go along with it. I have also explored keyword data and competition data relating to that. And I have even gone deeper and explored a number of different informational topics that I will be able to target and get decent keyword traffic on. Do this same type of thing with your own niche to where you have a really good understanding of what kinds of things people might be looking for having to do with that product, the ways that you can attract the traffic to your site and ultimately get those Amazon products sold. So now when you have reached this point, you can then continue on and actually plan out your entire website.